Howdy chaps, welcome back to the VoIP guys on introducing Aesthetics. As we said at the end of our last tutorial when we uh, finally finished our outbound call cool configurations for our SIP provider, we've had lots of requests about uh, NAT, uh, NAT tables and so on and so on and so on. Now I haven't got a clue about this. The only presentation I've ever seen was you doing it at one of our providers, uh, partners uh, kickoff event at the beginning of the year in German. So, mm -hmm. Matthias, I do know your presentation was quite funny. We recycled the presentation. <laughs> but this time it's in English. <laughs> but this time it's in English. <laughs> yeah, so Matthias, take us through uh, NAT, NAT. What is it? What does it do? Why do we need it? And so on and so on. Yeah. Um, first of all, we will um, make, I think, three or four tutorials about okay. the stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure how many they will be, but not only one tutorial for sure. Yeah. So let's see. So <laughs> it's a re relatively larger uh, topic, shall yes. we say. Yes, okay. um, because we should cover everything. We should cover, f uh, first of all, what is NAT, why do we need it, mm -hmm. and how it works in detail, and then what SIP does mm -hmm. and how it works. We covered this in several tutorials already, but regarding to... A bit of a refresher. With yeah, it, and with regarding to, to NAT, what's mm -hmm. important and what's not. Yeah. And then we can see how it works all together, and then maybe some special things which can happen. Okay. So the special things, just to say something. All right. <laughs> so the special, enough. the special <laughs> things could be something like uh, your provider uses a lot balancer, and you don't know which host will send you the next packet or something like uh -huh. that. So it can yeah. become really complicated. Yeah. Okay. Now, especially as we talked about it a lot in our SIP provider tutorials, I think it's time we start on explaining what exactly NAT tables mm -hmm. are and so on and so on. So, yeah. Matthias, take it away. So go to my presentation. <laughs> NAT. That's it. <laughs> That's it. All right. Perfect. Good. Done. That's it. <laughs> Why do we need NAT? Um, so many of you, I think, just know it, mm -hmm. but maybe not. So. We will start at the beginning. Um, so it's a good place to start. Yes, yes. And here I made, it's, it's hand illustrated. So it's... It, that's nice. I, that's I, nice. I quite like the personal touch. Personal <laughs> touch, yes. This is a man or a woman. You cannot... Yeah, I can't tell really. Yeah, well. No, yeah. but that's what I wanted. I have to say, your artistic skills, don't give up your day job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I like it. Yeah. So you have you have two networks here. This is your local network um, on your yeah on your site or mm -hmm. on your home office or I don't know. So something some, some local network. Um, then you have a a router mm -hmm. um, which could be your uh, provider's router or. A MikroTik router. Or it could a be a MikroTik router. Maybe. Now we've mentioned that, there's going to be lots of comments saying, can we get the MikroTik tutorials in English? Yes. Ah. Use a MikroTik router for routing mm -hmm. purposes. Yeah. But <laughs> that's the tutorial. <laughs> that's the tutorial, yes. So um, let's go ahead mm -hmm. and um, please back to the slide. Yeah. And then your router gets an official IP address or an IP address which is not an official one, but the IP address of your provider, but does not matter. Mm -hmm. Then the big fat internet and then somewhere you want to surf to Google search engine, maybe. Maybe Google. And you want to um, well, the search Google. something. Yeah. So the problem is why we do need NAT is we have lots of private uh, networks, mm -hmm. which are like this, and you have to hide them behind your official IP address. Right, okay. Why? Normally you, you would not do this mm -hmm. um, because you would just get a network from your carrier mm -hmm. and then use the network. But the problem is with the private networks, maybe your neighbor uses the same network. That's so entirely possible, yeah. You cannot route this network over the entire internet. Mm -hmm. So they are private and they will not be routed by your carrier or your internet provider uh -huh. or by somebody. So you don't can use those private IP addresses in the internet. So basically anytime you have an internal private LAN or VLAN network, yeah. Um, that you want to then access the internet over, you have to use an NAT table. Yes, you have okay. to use NAT and you have to hide your request behind your, you, you masquerade your request. Your public IP address. Uh, with the public IP address. Right, got it. So that's what you do, um, basically. And if you go back to the picture, mm -hmm. um, if you do a request uh, at Google, like uh, you surf to the Google web page, then you do a kind of HTTP request and then Google does not see your internal address, but the official address of the request. Right. So that's it. Um, so you could ask, why do we need NAT? Um, normally we don't, 
because mm-hmm. if you think about IP version 6, mm-hmm. you don't need NAT any longer because everybody gets an official network because there are many networks. Yeah. In IP version 4, the problem is um, that there are not enough resources mm-hmm. for everybody having his own network. So NAT was something like... Um, yeah. A miracle cure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, a godsend. To, 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 yeah. Yes, to, to solve that problem. Right, gotcha. Um, that's it. That's why we need NAT, why we use it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, this was the original reason. Um, another reason could be security, mm-hmm. because you hide all your hosts behind that IP address and they're not reachable from outside. This is some kind of uh, pseudo security, but yeah. somehow it's secure. Okay. Um, that's why we need an AT. So the next thing, I'm not sure if everybody knows that, is that there is the existence of the NAT table. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not, uh, maybe everybody knows that there is NAT. It yeah. translates your local addresses to your public IP, public IP address and mm-hmm. that's it. But now the NAT table, and I think not many people know the details about that. Right. So if you translate your local address to your public address, Mm -hmm. then every request you make has to be stored somewhere that if the answer comes back Mm -hmm. from, in my scenario, Google, um, that you can retranslate it to the local IP address. So you make the answer, uh, you, you make the request, and in a, st- a table is stored. If there is an answer to blah blah blah, mm-hmm. then um, Matthias was asking with his notebook. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. So you have to store it somewhere. Mm-hmm. And the next thing is um, that the table is stored with things, and the question is how long are things stored in that table? It's true. Yeah. Um, and this is how destination nut or source nut and so on and so forth work with storing everything in the NAT table. Okay. Um, and just for now, remember, it's not forever in the, in the NAT table. Mm-hmm. We will cover that uh, later. There are two kinds of NAT. The one is um, destination nut. Yep. The other one is, sorry, source nut. Yep. So, how does this work, or what's used for which purpose? The source nut is, I think, most often used. Mm-hmm. This is, I want to hide my local network behind uh, my official IP address. Yep. So I change the source. Mm-hmm. If the packet goes through the firewall, mm-hmm. or the NAT machine, whatever it is, a router, yep. but in most cases it's also firewall, then we change the source address, which mm-hmm. is an address of your local network, mm-hmm to the IP address um, or your official IP address. Right. So we just change, we manipulate the source. Okay. This is what we need in 99% of the cases. If we want to um, use the internet from our local network, then we use source NAT. Okay. The next thing is uh, destination NAT. So what's that? That's the other way around. If you want that maybe Google accesses your notebook. So you do not make a kind of outbound connection, Mm -hmm. but an inbound connection. Then you could do something, you could say, if somebody accesses this official IP address, then I translate the destination to the IP address of my notebook. Uh So um, this is done if you start a service on your notebook, Mm -hmm. like we did a gaming server, Okay. Something like this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then maybe you want a destination nut. Uh-huh. Um, and you translate the official IP address and some port of the official IP address to your local machine. Okay. It don't have to be your notebook. It could be your, um, your host, mm-hmm. your server, your PBX. Whatever it could be. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And those are two different techniques. And... Um, something you have to know, that there are two kinds of, okay. basically two kinds of, of NAT. Then the next good question is, how long are entries stored in the NAT table? So we mentioned already that every connection is stored in the NAT table mm-hmm. in both ways. So um, that if you receive the answer, 
yeah. of the host that the NAT table knows which uh, request was for which IP address and yep. can do his mm -hmm. translation. So it can, it can translate and route everything correctly. Yes. Right. Uh, the next question is who cares about the um, NAT table mm -hmm. and who deletes entries there? Okay. Uh, is there something or some mechanism which says, now I'm ready with this connection, please delete mm -hmm. the entry? No. There is not. Uh, so there is, in most cases, there are different implementations, but in most cases, there is a time to live okay. for each record. Right. Maybe 30 seconds, maybe one minute, maybe two minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Something like this. And um, if the connection is not used any longer mm -hmm. and the information is not um, valid any longer, then the it's, removed from the table. it's just removed from the table. So okay. any answer packet mm -hmm. from your from the system you're asking, like in a, my example, if you ask Google, mm -hmm. will answer, but the table does not know what to do, so it's just thrown away uh -huh. after a while. If there is mm -hmm. no new packet, for sure, if you there is always a new connection, mm -hmm. maybe um, you do a download and there is a new connection every time, okay. or you just refresh the page every time, yep. then for sure the TTL is um, updated right. and stored in the, in the NAT table. Okay. So that's how NAT works, basically. In a nutshell. In a nutshell. And uh, next time we figure out what this means for your SIP connection. Radio then. Okay. Actually, to be fair, uh, when we watched it at our partner, well, when I watched it at your partner, um, obviously there was all the gummy bears that were being thrown around and so on. Yeah. It was very entertaining. But um, being in German, didn't quite follow it all the time. Thanks very much for explaining that very simply for us. Um, so as Matthias says, uh, next time around, we're going to have a look at how NAT um, impacts your SIP connection, so, uh, and then therefore your phone system. Um, so that's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. Until then. See you. Bye.